historically low. So let's look at some bad news and some good news in the markets and uh, just take it from here this, to start this Monday off. So news and updates, the down payment assistance programs, um, they're extremely limited guys. With the rate spike, um, the yield that was typically there to give that down payment uh, to our customers um, for the down payment assistance at the higher rate is no longer there. So most of the down payment assistance programs are basically they just don't have the money to do to work right now. So if you have any first time home buyers that are looking at down payment assistance, be sure to call me to go over what your options are now. Be sure to call the lender that they're pre-qualified with uh, to make sure they understand what's happening and uh, kind of refresh that re that pre-qualification because that is a big factor. If anyone's a first time home buyer relying on a down payment assistance, much has changed. Have them double check their pre-approval and follow up on rates. Um, today, the CEO of Fannie Mae, uh, Hugh Freighter, uh, stepped down and Michael Hyde has taken his place. So that's a big uh, change and it's going to have some uh, effects rippling down through Fannie Mae. Uh, second home rates, guys, are the same now or similar to investment property rates. If you heard that right, it's crazy. But um, rates in the sixes for investment properties and second homes. So that's kind of tough to swallow, especially with this market in Arizona being such a big second home state. Um, the caps on rates are making investment homes and second homes costly. Right now, we can't go above 6% on the rate sheet. So what that means is those rate level, the loan level adjustments, um, we can't absorb them with a higher rate. So you're going to start to see investment properties and second homes actually have a cost uh, for that rate at 6%. So check with your lender, check with me to make sure your uh, customers know uh, what to expect properly on these second home rates because they are through the roof right now. Um, Overnight, so Japan sold a bunch of their international bonds overnight. We'll kind of talk about that with the bond market, kind of where we're at today in the bond market. The Ukraine fighting still is taking a toll on commodities prices and inflation expectations are set to be higher uh, just because of this. Uh, keep in mind, there's a lot of wheat and fertilizer that, the, the, that Russia and a few of those countries in that region uh, really have a monopoly on, so that could affect long-term costs on that. Um, in regards to the feds, a strong majority, 85 out of 102 economists uh, think the feds are going to raise 50 basis points in May. So 56 said the fed would follow up with another 50 points in June. So May, June, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully that will offset the inflation that we've been talking about, but uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, the yield curve inverted again this last week, but it did bounce back the other way. But that is a sign of the recession coming. Most economists think it is looming. It's uh, it's going to come. Uh, we just don't know when. But yield curve inverted, what that means is a short-term bond are actually paying you more or giving more of a yield than long-term bonds, which is typically not normal. Usually the longer term of the bond, the more yield you get, the more interest you can gain by investing in that bond. Now the short-term bond is actually was making more than the long-term. So that's come back again. So now the long-term is paying more than the short term so but it only inverted for a short period of time but that is a bad sign uh, a sign for the um, recession to be coming uh, some more news and updates low appraisals I see are more common now obviously when you're going 10% over asking and you're waiving appraisal contingencies but you're still getting an appraisal that could uh, cause some trouble cause some problems with your buyers I do have uh, at the end of this link, uh, at the end of this presentation, um, I'm going to point you to the link within this email uh, to watch the video that I've created to show you some really special ways of overcoming that. Um, about 12% of homes for sale in the nation had a price drop during the first four weeks of April uh, or ending April 3rd. Uh, that's up from 9% a year ago, but I think mainly because people are throwing these properties on the market at these obscene prices, just hoping to get something crazy, just to see what happens, uh, to see if it sells, right? And then they're lowering those back to what's expected for the market, which is still quite high uh, compared to where we were a year ago today. Um, the, the number of listings is actually up 8% from a year ago today. Um, that's That follows four straight weeks of declines in new listings. So we saw a little bump up in listings. That's a good thing for inventory. 
Um, buyers are still sweating because the average rate on the 30 year fix now is close to 5% or surpassing 5%. And the total mortgage demand dropped by 41% year over year. And that's mainly due to the lack of refinances that are coming out right now. So good news, inventory is still a major problem that we need more homes, but that means there's, there's a lot of buyers. There's not enough homes for the buyers out there. That means there's still a lot of buyers. So they are a little frustrated because of the rates, but there's still a lot of buyers. Uh, rates are still historically low. If you remove the Black Friday sale this last couple of years, guys, and look at what the average rates are, nobody would be talking about rates being high right now. Um, I'll, we'll look at that in just a second. Uh, they're still a massive group of first-time home buyers that are on the sideline that can't participate right now. They are waiting for the market to soften. It is showing signs of softening. So those first-time home buyers that kind of jumped off the off the bench, kind of went home, <laughs> kind of gave up, or are now renting, um, those will come back. Um, millennials are still shopping for homes, guys. They are the largest group of buyers ever. So don't give up. Um, rates are expected to drop. I believe. And a lot of people think once the feds gets a hold on inflation, once the recession hits, rates will drop. They will come back down. Um, that will pose a refinance opportunity to most people out there that may be buying at a higher rate. So uh, it does make sense to buy because you will have the opportunity to refinance down the road. But if you wait to buy, you could be missing out on 10% appreciation. So uh, you can always get a lower rate when rates drop, but uh, you can't always buy at a lower price. So um, market share will be opening up also. So if you are worried about too many realtors being in the business, um, guys, there's a lot of realtors out there that are just gonna throw in the towel. There's a lot of lenders that are just gonna throw in the towel. So now is the time to pick up market share. Now is the time to really put your gas pedal down and market and get out there and become the people, that, the realtor that people can rely on. So it's very good news for that. Uh, so just Keep moving, keep being motivated. And again, a winner is just a loser who tried one more time. So just keep trying, keep getting out there and you will win. So rates jump over 5%. Here's the average mortgage interest rates based on Mortgage News Daily for posting this morning. Uh, the 30 year is now at 5.06 with points. Yikes. Yes, we say yikes because we're so spoiled. We are very spoiled. 15 years at four and a quarter roughly, 4.29 with points. That means with no points, it's slightly higher. 30-year FHA is right around the mid to high fours at 4.68. 30-year jumbos, those are at 4.35. And 5-1 arms around 4%. You will start to see adjustable rate mortgages become a little bit more popular as we move forward. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. So here's what's happening today in the market. We are down 36 basis points this morning. Hopefully we will, re we will rebound, but look at this line I drew, this green line here on the candlestick charts. This is a disturbing trend line. You see, we never, we try to pop above it, we bounce below. We try to pop above it, we bounce below. We try to pop above, bounce below. We try, it bounces below. We try again, it bounces low. We tried, we succeeded, and then it bounced below. Uh, then it came back a little bit, and then now we're below it again. So this is a really solid trend line, which means rates are on a solid trend of getting worse. Um, it's a big week this week. We've got some bond auctions. We've got inflation numbers coming out. So expect inflation to tick a little higher. And that's because we were replacing a pretty low inflation number year over year last year for this month with a little bit higher one. So it is a, uh, a tough month out there for inflation, uh, but uh, we will continue to be resilient and we will continue to move forward. But here guys is a good visual of the movement over the past few months. This is the bond market normally with the fluctuations, okay? Normal bond market, it goes up and down. There's there's bad days, There's it's bounces back. There's good days, there's bad days, but it's in a pretty relatively smooth fashion. And then booyah, this is this last few months. Yes, this is a cliff. So this is what we're dealing with. This is why people's expectations are really blown. This is why there's a lot of psychological trauma it, with buyers right now is because it was such a fast move. So um, hopefully we'll see a rebound here shortly on this, but this gives you an idea of why people psychologically are just throwing in the towel, but don't let them stay resilient, stay strong, be the, the, uh, the motivator in the corner uh, as they fight the good fight, trying to find a home. But here's what I want to talk about guys. This is the historical 30 year mortgage rates over since 1975. Okay. 
yes, we're, we're at the 9% range, which was phenomenal, by the way. And then we had this massive spike during the 70s and early 80s. And then we came back down to the averages. And then we kind of saw them trickle down. So if you look at these, these the last, well, before 2019, we saw some of the fours dip down here. But for the most part, we were above 5% almost indefinitely over time. So the fact that we went below 5% is a good thing. Be happy that it happened, um, but just know that it's it's not normal to have that rate below 5%. So now we're back above 5%. That is somewhat normal because if you look at this 5% right here, the only time it hit below that was just 2011 it did, then it popped back up, then it popped, it popped back up, then it popped back up again today. So Rates in the fives really aren't bad historically. So I really want you guys to understand this. Use this graph. You can find it on Google as well. You can ask me for it. I'll send it to you. But use it to explain to your buyers that this is an anomaly that we had this last few years. So let's end it with some optimism here. Uh, real optimism has a reason to complain, but prefers to smile. So there you go. Um, I'm going to end with some optimism on some of the things happening right now. There will be a refinance opportunity in the future. Buy now, refi later. Um, I think that's a good, um, solid piece of advice. Buy now while prices are still lower because they will increase. Um, you can always refi later. There are hundreds of buyers still wanting to buy a home. Buyers that are priced out will come back with a different expectation. Once they understand and their new expectations are set, they will come back. They'll just maybe change the price range. A slower market will help us get our sanity back. So instead of writing 50 offers for one buyer, you may offer, you make five or six offers, who knows? Uh, but that will be nice for our sanity. Uh, inventory is growing, we need it. So that's a good sign. And the number of offers being made on each home is actually slowing down. It's still high, but it's slowing down. So that's some good optimism, optimism um, as we move forward. And then of course, of course, the joke of the day. We have to end it with some humor. So positivity as we move forward. What is a what is a house's favorite thing to wear? What is a house's favorite thing to wear? Why a dress, of course. I know, super cheesy. But uh, that's your update for the week. I really do appreciate you guys hanging in there to the end. And if you need anything, call me, WolanMortgageTeam.com. Uh, you can always reach me direct on my cell, 480-322-4544 is my direct cell. You can reach me anytime on that. And we thank you for all of your business. And put on your boxing gloves, go out and fight the good fight, stay positive, and we'll see you next week.